public health practitioners spend a lot of time observing where there are healthy populations and where there are populations that are lacking in health or have an increase in disease. And because of the observations, we have been able to categorize the social determinants and provided here is a list of the 10 key categories provided by the World Health Organization, sometimes known as the WHO. So let's review these. The first is the social gradient, sometimes called the social status. This is the difference in wealth and opportunity between those with the most and those with the least. We know that societies place value on certain characteristics such that a hierarchical social structure is formed. In the United States, value tends to be placed on income, education, and occupation, which collectively forms socioeconomic status. The second one is social support and alienation. Being part of a social network has benefits to health, including emotional effects associated with feelings of inclusion and tangible benefits such as having someone to go jogging with or having someone to provide a ride to the doctor's office. Social exclusion can occur due to racism, discrimination, and other forms of marginalization, limiting the opportunities for education, leisure activity, and other community services. This can occur either directly through discriminatory practices or as a consequence of cumulative exposure to discrimination resulting in fear, anger, distrust, or stress so that individuals do not seek out such opportunities. The third is food. An inadequate or insecure food source remains an issue for disadvantaged populations in the United States and around the world. However, excess caloric intake and the lack of a nutritious diet is a rapidly growing problem. Not only is education important in being aware of what contributes a good diet, but having access to affordable healthy food is a central component of leading a healthy lifestyle. A food desert is a term used to describe geographic areas that lack grocery stores or other establishments in which low-income individuals are able to purchase nutritious food due to high price or inaccessibility. I hope you are all aware of the Pirate Cove at Orange Coast College. It's a food pantry for students where you can get free food I think you just have to show your student ID, so please know it's in the center of camp campus and you have access when you're on campus. The fourth is housing. Having affordable, stable housing influences health in a number of ways. Homelessness can lead to malnutrition, lack of medical care, drug use, and violence. Therefore, those with a home tend to have better overall health compared to those who don't have a home. However, hazards can also be present in the home, including lack of clean water and sanitation, asthma triggers such as mold and dust, lead paint, cockroaches, inadequate sanitation, and unsafe structural conditions. A fifth category is education. Even with the same overall socioeconomic status, those with more education tend to experience better health compared to those with less education. Efforts to address health should, therefore, include making quality education at all levels widely accessible to the populations. Work. Overall, being employed tends to be better for health compared to being unemployed. This is partially attributed to the connection between socioeconomic status and health. Having an income assists a person's ability to secure resources that may protect and promote health such as safe housing and food and education. Being employed can also assist in accessing health services if the employer provides health insurance to employees. Types of employment can also affect health. Some jobs are more hazardous to health than others. Health effects associated with work are not restricted to physical health because work can also affect mental health. Job satisfaction and stress in the work, uh, workplace contribute to health. Speaking of stress, Stress is the next item on the list. Stress is a social and psychological response with biological consequences. It's related to the fight or flight response. 
A variety of circumstances can create anxiety and worry, whether it is an intense work setting or the threat of losing one's home. Sustained periods of stress can negatively affect health, physical health particularly, due to the body's fight or flight response, which increases the heart rate and cortisol levels. Over time, stress can lead to such conditions as cardiovascular disease and depression. Next on the list is transportation. A component of environmental health, transportation also affects health in a number of ways. By driving less and walking or cycling more and using mass transit, people increase their physical activity levels. Place. Where you live affects your health. For example, those living in rural areas have fewer health services available nearby, whereas those living in urban areas are exposed to more air pollution from factories and vehicles. Lastly is access to health services. Having access to preventative health services and medical care contributes to overall health. Access to services such as often um, is often limited by health insurance. On a broader scale, having an appropriate number and type of health care professionals is instrumental to maintaining the health of individuals and populations. We are now going to take a little time to watch a documentary called Unnatural Causes. You will find a link on the next page.